how big is this? We know more of this is going to continue. And what can you do to keep yourself from being a victim of identity theft or crime resulting from these hackings? Jamie Mellis of Software Solutions, he has our computer program from 10 to noon on Saturdays here at AM 1340 and AM 950 The Voice. Welcome. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Brian. How are you? I'm great. So how big is this news story in your view as a computer expert? Is this a big deal or is it just another event? You know, it, it is actually kind of a big deal. You know, we've had actually two big stories come out uh, recently, this one and, and then also the, the USB flaw uh, issue out there, which I think is actually a bigger story than actually the Russian hack. But as you mentioned, 1.2 billion usernames and passwords. Facebook, just to kind of put this in perspective, 1.3 billion users. So, I mean, they've collected about as much information as what Facebook has. Would I be an alarmist? That's a good point, uh, Jamie Mellis. Would I be an alarmist to say that pretty much if you've got a Facebook account, there's a good chance you've been hacked, not because you're on Facebook, but because the numbers just add up to that many people? I, I think you're exactly right. And, you know, we really need a, 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 a fundamental change of how we handle authentication out there today because passwords, basically, they're useless at this point. And I think one of the things is that if people would start using a technology that's actually been around for a while, it could significantly reduce your risk out there, and that's to use the two-factor authentication. So a lot of sites now are starting to go to this, Brian, where you use your username, you put in your password, and then the site will then text you an additional code that you enter that then allows you to authenticate at that site, and it's a one-time use code. So... Without that code, you're not going to be able to log in to the site. How about with the sites that ask you all the questions, like your bank and such, and mother's maiden name, what city you're born? It seems it would be easy to get that data. Should I just make that up and come up with something that's not related to me, or should I should I answer it correctly? Is that a way to add security? You know, Brian, that's, that's a very good point, and I often tell people don't use. Just because the question says, what is your mother's maiden name, you don't have to put your mother's maiden name in there. Just put in some other piece of information, but just remember – what that is. So if you want to use your dog's, you know, name Fido, just make sure that if you ever have to answer that question, that you know that you use that particular piece of information. We're talking to Jamie Mellis of Software Solutions. He's our computer expert Saturdays 10 to noon here on The Voice. Um, Jamie, should I change all my passwords upon learning this news immediately because they may do something or would that be a bit alarmist of me to do that? You know, Brian, I think it's a good idea to periodically change your password on all of your sites uh, just in case if something like this does happen, that your password is going to change periodically. And by the way, I don't know if you know this, but the security firm that discovered this said that it took them over seven months to actually figure out what was actually going on. So this information has been in these guys' hands for a very long time. So, uh, Jamie, and again, if you're just joining us, uh, 1.5 billion usernames, passwords, personal information hacked by Russians, uh, the, the computer firm holds security. I, I want to ask this question. You may not want to answer it, but I, uh, d- do you think that any part of this revelation is a PR stunt or this, this firm trying to gain attention and gain business from it? I've heard they're coming out with some sort of an app that's going to be released to help people is is this are we to believe this at face value or is there some part of a business uh, initiative going on here in your view or uh... I, I think it's actually both in that okay. the, the company isn't actually going to provide this information to the public for free so the, you know they're saying that they will provide the information to companies that have been hacked and as you mentioned over 420,000 sites have been compromised and so they are going to charge a fee, and what uh, the fee I've been reading has been roughly one hundred and twenty dollars a month for their you know for their wow. service okay you know so I mean if you think about it, you know four hundred and twenty thousand sites at you know one hundred and twenty dollars a month i mean that that's some serious money out there so um so that aside, let's say that there is a business uh, acumen or initiative behind what uh, this revelation there there is a reality we've had target we've had i think it was Neiman Marcus or Nordstrom one uh, we continue to see our state was hacked the South Carolina Department of Revenue with with millions of records there I mean so easy to say we are going to continue facing 
people from other parts of the world hacking our data and using it against us. One of the things they do, I understand, Jamie, is they take email addresses and they send you an email and it looks like it's from like Wells Fargo or PayPal or whatever. And they say that you, you, you know, somebody has logged into your account from an unauthorized source. Click here to change your username and password. Then you go in, you input your username and password as it was and you change it. Uh, you are not actually changing it, then they've captured your username and password. How do people avoid those si- types of scams that they get on their, in their email box? So if you did do that and you use that two-factor authentication, even if you were to give them your real username and password, then what's going to happen is they're going to try to log into your account. They're not going to be able to get in because what's going to happen is it's going to require that extra piece of information and believe it or not, this is actually another tool that you can use to see if someone may be trying to compromise your account because all of a sudden you're going to get a text message saying, okay, here's your code, and you're going to say, well, I didn't even try to log in, so why would, why would you be sending me a code? Mm-hmm. Because somebody is trying to compromise your account. And you would know then to go and, and change your username and password for sure. Absolutely. I always have told people if you get something in the email that says something like that, go. don't click a link. Always just go to the web page yes. for wellsfargo.com or whatever bank it is and, and go straight there. Because a lot of times when you click that link, you'll notice that the .com is some random bizarre .com, but it looks just like the real page for PayPal or Wells Fargo. So it's it's clearly a, a fraud now. Jamie Mel- Ellis with us of Software Solutions, computer show here 10 to noon on Saturdays on The Voice. You, you talk about this two-part authentication, enter a username and password, then it, it texts you a code, you enter the code. That's the way you can be more secure. How do I set that up on a common website that I'm using frequently? Do they all have it, or is it hit or miss? It's hit or miss, but there are a lot of sites have actually gone to this now where they, you know, Facebook and Gmail and a lot of uh, banks and so forth are now offering the two-factor or multi-factor authentication. And if, you're, if your site offers it, you've got to use it. I mean, it's, it's not whether or not this is something you should do. It's a must-do. Go out there and check to see if your site offers that. This may get a little technical, but I, I, I'll ask it at that risk. Uh, how is it that I'm on some website doing something, and um, is it on their end or my end that these hackers are being able to capture my information? Are they get are they kind of capturing it as a snapshot of my computer, or are the hackers grabbing it from the, the from the server or device or website that I'm using? How's that happening? It's actually both, Brian. In this particular case with the Russians, they were compromising the sites and stealing the databases. Now, here's something that just I, I cannot understand why this continues to be an issue, and that is. Why are these companies still storing this information unencrypted? Usernames, password, credit card numbers, social security numbers, all of that information should be, it should be required by law that if a site is going to ask you or require that you provide that information, that they should have an obligation to encrypt that data. That could significantly reduce the, this type of an attack. And then the other problem, as you mentioned, is that it could actually happen at your computer which is where someone can actually record your keystrokes as you type them. Even if you're on the most secure site in the world, if you happen to have a keylogger, which is a type of malware that can be on your computer, if you're at a site and you're typing your username and password, they can actually record the keystrokes as you type them and steal your, steal your username. How do, I, how do I get rid of that? I mean, do, do I have to have some sort of software? What, what, what does a, a regular, regular Joe do uh, who, who's not a software expert like you are? What, what can they do to their computer, their, their Apple or their, their uh, PC-based product to make it more safe? You know, Brian, in this particular case, the antivirus programs are you know, basically being reactive. As this stuff comes out, it may take two months, three months, a year before they know about it. And until you have something that can actually scan to detect that particular keylogger, you're not going to be able to uh, uh, fix that problem. But, again, if we go back to the two-factor authentication, they won't be able to get the other piece of information, which is that text that's going to come to you with that code. Jamie Mella, Software Solutions, great job. I appreciate it. You you handled that very nicely because a lot of questions and you had all the answers we We invite people to listen. I'm sure you'll be talking about this Saturday, 10 to noon, here on The Voice. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for uh, for inviting me. Yeah, it's a two-hour show, and you can call in and ask questions uh, ad nauseum all throughout the two hours, 843-721-1340.